Hi, I'm Mike, owner of The Ingroove in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm doing a system update. So this is gonna be for July 2021. A lot of stuff has happened uh, since I last did a system update. You know, the last system update I did about six months ago was more of an intermediary uh, update because there was some stuff that I was trying to work out, some tweaks that I was trying to do that just didn't come to fruition. Uh, I told you guys in the last video, I wasn't super thrilled with some of the stuff that I had in my system. I was working on the Wilsons, trying to get them dialed in. I wasn't a fan of the Mac Pre. I wanted to kind of upgrade that. Uh, I knew that was kind of on the horizon. I also talked to you about a turntable. I, you know, I was looking to update a lot of stuff. When I got the Wilsons, it kind of made me want to, you know, ratchet the system completely up. Uh, still not completely there. You know, I think with audio files in general, most audio files, if you're really into this, I don't know if you ever are totally done. You know, you get an upgrade in your system that shows other weaknesses in your system and then you start upgrading again. And it's a vicious cycle, it never ends. And unfortunately, it just kinda, as my wife would say, when is it over? It's generally never over. Some guys buy a system, they're like, okay, I'm gonna get this, 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 and this. They buy it as a one-shot deal, it's a forever system, and they're done. Most guys that I know that are audiophiles are not those people. They're always looking to tweak and upgrade wife permitting. So let me show you kind of right off the jump. The main thing you're looking at here, update wise, is I got rid of my C1000 Macintosh preamp, which was a two chassis preamp, to the VTL 7.5 Series 3 preamp. Unbelievably killer sounding preamp. I had the luxury of demoing it in the house before I bought it. Uh, a little later on, I'll show you some of the other upgrades I made when I added my subwoofers and I was retuning the entire system. These were brought out to my house. I was able to give a listen in my actual room. And I got to spend some time with them. I got to spend two days with them. Uh, you know, my subwoofer update and the VTLs came from Meyer out in Southern California. And I'll kind of show you guys some stuff a little later on. I took a little bit of video of him bringing in the subwoofers into the house. I'll show you guys that when we get to the subs. But it was uh, it was a two-day process. I have a very, very, very finicky room. And, uh, you know, I'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into the speakers. But this was a pretty night and day difference. The Macintosh really bumped the mid-range. The mid-range was really silky smooth and sweet. And it was very hard at first to discern what I was actually listening to. But then I put on the right couple of albums, and the big key for me was Art Blakey's Moan and my favorite jazz album. When I put that on and I was actually, you listen to the upper end of that album, you know, Art Blakey's cymbals were so much more arid, there was so much more space, they were so much more sweeter, and the whole sound stage was more linear. You know, the Macintosh, I felt, had a real nice bump in the mid-range, but I don't think as a whole it gave quite the presentation that this VTL does. This VTL, unbelievably sweet preamp. And of course, you know, I've got the matching, you know, I've got the VTL Siegfried uh, Series 2 monoblock. It's just obviously the pairing is, they were made together. They were meant to go together. You'll find system cohesion so very important. So many pieces of gear I've brought into the system that sound absolutely awesome. And we're not talking about junk gear. I've tried very, very high-end quality components in my system throughout the year, years. Got them in the system. They just don't sound right. There's generally a system cohesion that you kind of have to adhere to. As much as manufacturers will say, you know, our speakers are meant for everything. Our amps will power everything. Our such and such will go with everything. More times than not, that's uh, not the case. But the VTLs, a fantastic upgrade to the Mac C1000. Unbelievably good. I haven't had a chance to tube roll in this thing yet. I'm thinking that's really going to make quite a bit of difference. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Everything is on a solid steel rack. I love these solid steel racks. I remember the first time I got this, I brought one into the store. You know, I needed some racking for the store. I already, you know, Solid Steel is distributed by a company for some other products. Uh, you know, Mobile Fidelity 
turntables that I have in the store and I love. You know, they're also the solid steel distributors. So on a whim, I just said to myself, you know, let's bring in a solid, let's get a couple of racks. And I'll never forget, brought this rack in and I remember seeing the shipping weight. It was like 210 pounds. And I thought to myself, the hell is on there? 210 pounds. All I've got coming is a rack. What weighs so much? It was this rack. It is built like a tank. I loved it so much at the store. I got three of them for myself. That is really the true, truly unique things about my store in general, is I carry the stuff that I like. I carry the stuff that I would own, that I want to own, and I carry the stuff that I dig. You know, so I'm, I've got the solid steel in the store. I've got the solid steel in the house. Fully customizable shelf-wise configuration, the width between the shelf, uh, the height, you know, up, on the bottom spike is adjustable. All of these are adjustable. Really a phenomenal shelf. It has kind of an almost rubber paint to it that when you're sliding in and out 100 pound gear, it doesn't make a mark on it. It's a truly, a really unique stand. And all of these shelves, you know, they're just resting on top. They just sit on top. So everything is kind of in a sense, although it's one solid shelf, it's really isolated from each other. But a phenomenal shelf for the money. You know, you could spend, I've got an HRS isolation rack. You know, you could spend 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, uh, obscene, obnoxious amounts of money on isolation equipment. Bang for the buck, for what this costs, you know, retail on one of these things is 2,500 bucks. Seems like a lot, but it's an Italian made isolation rack that's absolutely killer. It's not a ton of money in this business of hi-fi. It is a, it's a killer rack for the money. It truly is. So we got the VTL sitting on the solid steel. Below it is the new Parasound JC5. This is the subwoofer amplifier. Now, when I got this thing, you know, I bought, purchased this on the phone. And one of the reasons I was able to purchase this on the phone, sight unseen, is what I just mentioned, system cohesion. Dave Wilson created my speakers in conjunction with a pair of VTL Siegfried amps. It was something that he had in his home. I think he still has it to this day. Don't quote me. Or excuse me, the family still has it to this day. Of course, Dave Wilson has passed. But I believe this is something that is still part of Wilson, the Siegfrieds, and the Parasound amp. So I found throughout the course of building this system, certain things worked really well with each other. And when I got going and I realized how well certain things worked with each other, I just said, well, you know what? Let's keep buying what David Wilson had in the system. This is not the same amp. This is a little bit newer, more modern, more power, more power than I truly need. This is 400 watts into 8 ohms. I think it's 600 watts into 4 ohms. The subwoofers that are powering it are pretty efficient for subwoofers. They're 90, 89 decibel efficiency. You'll see on the crossover, I have the volume just so barely turned up. I don't know if they ever truly get anywhere near. You know, I don't know if the subs pull anywhere near the amount of power that the Parasound can deliver. But I got it if I need it. And like I say, in my room, it took two days getting these subs dialed in. Meyer had Wilson deliver the subs to my house. He came with the VTL, some other stuff, came to the house, and it was a total of two days. An unbelievable amount of time for a dealer to spend in the house, and I truly appreciate it. Granted, you know, you're not dealing with the cheapest gear. But I know a lot of dealers that will come out and sell you this gear, and they'll set your stuff up in 20 minutes, and they're out the door. So, yeah, you know, and I, I'm a hi-fi dealer, but I don't sell the caliber of this kind of stuff in my store. I do mid-fi stuff. When you start getting into your 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollar components, I'm familiar with the stuff. I listen to a lot of this stuff, but I'm not a dealer for this stuff. I would love to do it, but I just don't have the store set up. I don't have the, you know, I don't have the space for it. I don't have the sound room for it. Maybe in the future, but not right now. Got the new crossover from Wilson. 
This is the uh, new XO. So the original Wilson Alexandria crossover was a dual mono configuration. You have one crossover for the left, one crossover for the right. This is monumentally specked out, significantly better, lower noise floor, unbelievably great sound and crossover. You know, but it's one of those things that you get it, you set it, you can tweak and play around with it a little bit, but after a while when the novelty wears off, you just kind of leave it alone. And that's it. It just sits there and it's either on or off. Above it, I have my Macintosh Phono Stage. This is something that in the future I would love to upgrade, get a nicer Phono Stage. But this thing is so versatile, and I've mentioned this in videos past, it's hard for me to get rid of this thing. You can hook three turntables up into it. And unlike a lot of turntables where you get a moving magnet, a moving coil, you can hook up any three turntable cartridges into this and load it exactly the way you want. You could do three moving coils in the back. You could do three moving magnets in the back. All your gain settings, ohm loading, all of that is fully customizable for each channel. Not only that, it has a really high quality DAC on it. So you have really the ability to digitize stuff. I do it all the time. I digitize higher end records, play the files at the store. You know, Santana Braxis, one step of file I love to play at the store. And a lot of the rarer free jazz and funk records and psych records that I have, stuff that maybe doesn't even exist digitally, uh, I've digitized and I've done it with the, uh, with the Macintosh uh, MP1100. So, you know, a buddy of mine has the matching uh, phono stage for this. I'm going to borrow his, uh, see what it sounds like. He's got the brand new Series 2 that just recently came out. I think it's, what is it, the VTL 6.5 Series 2. Don't quote me off of that, but it's the matching phono stage that, as this. A little, you know, compared to this, it's a lot of limited functionality. So I've kind of like told him, you know, no, let's, you know, no, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Because with a lot of this gear is the biggest problem is you can't unhear things. I bring that thing into my house and I hear how much better it is if it is, assuming it is. I don't know if I'm ready yet to lose the features that this thing offers. It's always something that I could work around with with buying more gear. But there's some other stuff in the system that I'd like to buy first. I really would love to upgrade the table. But, you know, upgrade the tone arm. But as of now, I've got the AMG V12 with the wood skirt. Killer sounding table. I've had it. It's the oldest piece of gear in this rack. I've had it 10 years. Maybe 10 years I think I've had it. No gear has lasted even a third of that time. I feel like I changed the gear out significantly quicker than that, but I love this table. There's some other tables I would love. You know, I'm a Dr. Feichart table. I've set up Blackbirds for folks, Firebirds for folks. We do it with the Kuzma four-point tone arm. Unbelievable tone arm. But, you know... It's just not something that I want to move to. I feel like if I'm going to do an upgrade for the turntable, I want to get something significantly higher. And I would love an Air Force One. You know, you can find killer deals on them used. That's ideally the table I want for this system. I kind of hinted that I was looking at tables. I've looked at those Air Force One. You could sometimes find them online. You know, the Uber high-end stuff, sometimes you'll find the stuff 50, 60% off of retail. So if the right one pops up, I'll pull the trigger on it. But I would really, that's the table I really, really would like. Probably going to have to require a reworking of the base and the, you know, the rack that it's on because it's such a massive table. But if I upgrade the table, I really want to go to something that has air bearing, tone arm, vacuum hold down. I mean, that's, that's the top caliber. You know, and that's where I'd like to go. I probably will. This is an Ortofon Winfeld TI, an amazing sounding cartridge. I will keep it, but I'm probably going to get a Kawatsu Jade Stone cartridge in the store, or from, excuse me, at the house here. I've got a Rosewood and a Rosewood Platinum at the store. They're unbelievably killer sounding cartridges. I find so many cartridges are good at one thing and not another. 
the Kawatu cartridges are absolutely sweet across the spectrum. You know, I always tell folks, well, you know, I really like this cartridge. It really rocks. Oh, this is a really killer classical cartridge. This is a really great mid-rangey guitar or jet, you know, whatever the, the case might be. The Kawatsus are so killer across the board. Every piece of music I've thrown at them, they just sound absolutely killer. So, you know, that would probably be my next cartridge. You know, when this gets to the point where it needs to be retipped, we're going to do the Kawatsu. We're going to cycle that into the system. Below that, on the very bottom, you'll see that I have an Ortofon ST80 SE step up transformer. I find that this particular cartridge, the Winfeld, likes to run a little hot. So, you know, I have it essentially hooked into the step up transformer, brought down to 40 dB at the phono stage. The step up transformer is 28 dB of gain. So I run that cartridge at 68 dB. Sounds better to me, has a little bit more bite. I think the math works out to it's supposed to be around 64 dB again. But, you know, that, that's the sweet spot for me. Ironically enough, although it's slightly overloaded, the Macintosh can tell if you're overloading it, you know, it clips. But virtually almost never do I clip the phono stage, even with the much higher gain going into it. Uh, Santana Braxis will clip. A couple of the one steps, you can get it to clip. But sounds phenomenal even when it's clipping. You know, analog clips so nice and wonderfully. So not even noticeable. If it wasn't for the little flashing clip that comes onto the screen here, you know, you, you wouldn't even know it. So yeah, we've got Winfeld going in to the Step Up Transformer, going into the MP1100. I've got other cartridges in the system. I have a Mawagami Zero mono cartridge. I've had multiple mono tables here. I just find them sit, that they sit here and they just, I've never had a table and cartridge to the caliber of my main table. So I find myself more tens than not playing things just on the main table. So right now I've got an ovation with the universal tone arm that sat here in the last video. Uh, it's something that my wife is using at the moment, but unfortunately the maid snapped the cartridge down there. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny. I always get a chuckle. You know how many cartridges I sell because maids snap off the cantilever? And there's some guys that the maids have done it three, four times, and I've sold the same cartridge to them, set it up. I always get a little chuckle of it, and of course it happens to me. So, yeah. You'll see off in the corner there, I have the Mawagami step-up transformer for the mono cartridge. That is, what is that, the ETR-1, uh, ETR mono. Not hooked up right now, but I do have it, the matching step-up for the Mawagami Zero cartridge. Off to the end here, I have the MCD 550 SA CD player that I've played almost no CDs on. I've told you guys in multiple videos, I'm not really a CD guy. I happened to get that on a collection. The guy was selling his vinyl collection, his turntable and his CD, all physical media he was getting rid of. He was an audiophile, he had a lot of nice gear, but he was gonna stick purely with streaming. So, yeah, bought it all from him. Got the CD player, transport was broken. He only had one CD, by the way. He had a Chicago little miniature, Chicago quadraphonic box set. It's the only CD he owned. I bought that, got the SA CD player, got it. The transport was broken. Had to get the transport broken. I played less than a dozen CDs since I've had it. I have an amazing collection of Mobile Fidelity, DCC, Audiophile, and SA CDs that I've just picked up over the years. They come into the store. I take them home. I put them on the shelf. I don't listen to them. I get them because I know how hard they are. They're fine. And I put a lot of things in my collection that I'm not necessarily a fan of, but when I see it, I get it because I never know the future. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't like 10 years ago that I love now, and I rather, you know, I know being a store owner, I know how hard it is to find certain things, and when it's in front of you is the time to get it. So, personally, I'm not a Towns Van Zandt prop, uh, you know, fan. 
but I have every Towns Van Zandt record. I have the later tomato pressings and I have the early poppy presents, pressings. I cannot stand Towns Van Zandt. I do not like it. But maybe in 20 years, I'll be a huge Towns Van Zandt pro, you know, fan and I'll have everything. And I know now how hard those records are to get. I could just imagine what those records are gonna be like 20 years from now. There's just, you're never gonna find them. You can virtually never find them now. <laughs> okay, the techniques. Auto reversing 1700. This replaces an Akai reel to reel that I had. This came into the store and as you can see, this thing is mint. It is perfect. Got it. Cosmetically was perfect, but like a lot of these techniques, 1700s, it needed a full recap. Had it fully mechanically redone, and here it sits. I have a lot of commercial reel-to-reels. Most of my reel-to-reels, though, are two-track. I've got two other two-track machines I'll show you, but I do have some uh, quarter-track stuff, and it mostly gets played on this, or I've got another... Uh, two track machine with a four track head in it that I play either on that or on the 1700. But the 1700, probably the best quarter track machine ever made. I got a super clean one. Again, I know how hard these things are to find in this condition. Had the original box, had the styrofoam, it was complete. The guy had the original like battery pack. He had all the upgrades, the accessories. But yeah, so I got it restored it and there it rests so let's see make sure i went over everything yeah that's uh that's the gist here again i've showed you guys most of this equipment before short of the wilson crossover the parasound and the vtls everything is a carryover from the last video all right so now the big upgrades in the system and the big upgrades in the system are two things one the Wilson Alexandria moved from somewhere around here to somewhere over here. And in doing that, absolutely radically, unequivocally changed the sound exponentially. I just cannot stress how finicky these speakers are. It was quite amazing. You know, so Meyer from the audio salon comes out to my house He's the gentleman that I purchased the Wilson uh, Thor's hammers from here in the back. I'll talk about them in a minute. But the very first thing we do, and again, this was a two-day process, is set up the speakers. You know, we mic up the room and we're, you know, we're checking for sound pressure. We're checking the decibels. And it's absolutely amazing. If we move this speaker three inches up or three inches over, the speaker becomes 10 dB quieter. It's just unbelievable how much change just moving these things around made. And I mean, it was a absolutely tedious process. You know, we put these things on coasters and they just moved for two days. I mean, probably 30 hours in this area and it just radically, radically, radically change the sound. I cannot stress that enough. If you've purchased a pair of these and your dealer comes to your house and he's out of there in an hour, there's a problem. These are absolutely, extremely finicky. And what I was able to achieve, spending time listening, you know, there was four of us here doing it, a buddy of mine and Meyer and a buddy, you know, one of his workers, and we were, you know, just the amount of tweaking we did and the amount of change it made was just unbelievable. Once we got the speakers dialed in, then we got the Thor's hammers installed. 600 pounds of subwoofer times two, probably roughly 1,300 pounds of subwoofer. And I'll tell you this, once we got the speakers dialed in, you know, you think to yourself, almost, you know, do you need the subwoofers? Most people see these big subwoofers and they're thinking maybe these things just make big thumping, room shaking noise, and that is not the case. They're very, very, very subtle. They're on so very little, it 
fills up the room, I guess is the best way of describing it. It doesn't thump any harder per se, it doesn't hit any harder, but it's a fuller, more complete sound with the subwoofers. To the point of if I accidentally forget to turn on the amp, which I've done a few times, you just know there's something missing. It's not, oh, I forgot to put the subwoofer on because my light fixtures are not rattling. I mean, it's not that. This isn't a club. You know, it's amazing the amount of effort you have to go through to add just a little bit more to the room. But that's what they gave me, that little bit more. But it fills the sound stage, and that's that made it worth it. You know, it wasn't just a combination of moving the speakers, but everything in this area had to move. Just moving the amplifiers a foot apart made a huge difference. When you know when you're dealing with gear at this price level, you really, you know, I, I would say the difference between you know a twenty thousand dollars system and a two hundred thousand dollars system is marginal. You know, maybe you get 85% of what's available out there with the first system. Maybe you spend an exorbitant amount of extra money and you get another 5 to 10%. I mean, you get huge diminishing returns at this price point. But I will tell you these subwoofers made an absolutely huge difference. But the main difference in this setup was moving these speakers into the right location. So when I first got these speakers, me and Angel brought them in. We got them about where they needed to be. But like I told you, three inches this way is about where they were, but made just such a radical difference. So they were pushed out to the walls a little more, moved up maybe just a tiny, tiny bit, and boy, what a difference they made. When I first got them, I wasn't digging the speaker at all. They just didn't sound good. It was a problem. I had them originally hooked up to my Macintosh, uh, one two KWs. It just was a harsh sound. It just didn't sound right. A customer of mine said, "You know, Mike, I'm in the process of selling a pair of VTL ones. You know, pick them up, try them out. You know, I thought about it. I'm like, oh my god. You know, it's not easy. These things are 250 pounds a piece and come in crates this big. It wasn't exactly like, oh, just swing by, throw them in the back seat, and tell me what you think. It was a major undertaking, but the minute I plugged them in, it was like, Angel comes in and says, ah, damn it, um, you know, and she just knew. The ah, damn it was she knew that I was going to buy these amps because they were a radical improvement and sounded significantly better. I always use my wife as a gauge of, to whether I'm spending foolish money or not because she's called me out on many, many upgrades and said, you know, many times have told me, you've got hosed, this doesn't sound any better or it sounds worse. But this was something that was so matter of fact, it sounded so much better, but there was some things about this amp that I didn't like. And one of the things that the Siegfried ones had that I couldn't get by, they had like a really low, low level, not a hum, but like a buzz, the Siegfried ones. It's like a ringing sound. And it was one of those things I read it in a review and I heard it. And it was one of those things I wondered to myself, if I didn't read this review and I wasn't listening for this, would I have ever even noticed it? I'm not sure, but I noticed it and it was enough for make, to make me want to hunt out a pair of Siegfried 2s. So, found a pair of Siegfried 2s, drove to California, gave my buddy his amps back, got a pair of Siegfried 2s. All was right in the world. But... I still wasn't super excited about the sound. The sound at that point was better than the old speakers. So it was kind of a thing where I went from, my other system was a better sounding system. Then it got, you know, slightly better with the amp upgrade and then <laughs> moving this around, I'll tell you what, if somebody put a blanket from here to here, came and moved these speakers around and said, Mike, I upgraded your system, you owe me 75 grand, I would go, wow, that really sounds drastically better. Yeah, what am I buying for 75 grand? And you would expect to see a bunch of stuff making it sound better. But no, it was the speakers moved a couple of inches this way and a couple of inches that way. I cannot stress, I'll, I'll say it again, the speaker placement in this room was so 
so important. But yeah, that kind of is, I've got it dialed in. I've got it where I want it. Wilson Alexandria Series 2 X2s for the speakers. The God of Thunder Wilson's Thor Hammers. I like them personally without the little subwoofer cover. I mean, you know, that's the subwoofer cover. Come on, let's be real. You want to see the sub, right? So I leave them off. So we have on the floor a pair of Wireworld Gold Eclipse and uh, Silver Eclipse running the subs. Gold Eclipse on the Wilson Alexandrias, Silver Eclipse on the subs, and I have the upgraded power case. These are uh, Electra, Silver Electra. Power cables from Wireworld running the amps. They are a 20 amp socket, so I had to have those custom spec from Wireworld. And they are actually sitting on top of a pair of carbon fiber Grand Prix stands. And uh, yeah, unbelievable amp. You know, I've talked about this in previous videos. I'll kind of mention it again. Uh, unbelievable, best sounding amp I've ever heard. I've heard at audio shows and at hi-fi sh shops all up and down the West Coast, this is the best pair of amps I've ever heard for my taste. I love the overall tube sound, the warmth that it brings you into the music. I listen to a lot of jazz. I listen to a lot of classical music. I do listen to a lot. Of, I listen to a lot of everything, but these amps do it all. They are 650 watts a channel and going into a 92 decibel efficiency speaker. More power than you would probably ever need. The best thing about this particular tube amp is you are buying the most modern tube amp you could possibly imagine. There's a 240 second countdown. So every time you turn on the amp, you got to wait four minutes. The amps count down and the tube auto bias after every, you know at the beginning of every single startup not only that when there's no signal being fed into the music the tubes auto bias so if i lift the tone arm up or i hit pause if i'm listening to a cd you walk over to the amp and you'll actually see the tubes the light you know there's a green light on all 12 tubes and they start auto biasing on the music's downtime. So they are always in absolute tip top performance. It's just an unbelievably killer sounding amp. I'm super thrilled to have these. Made in Southern California. Uh, super small batch. I think maybe they make a pair or two of these things a month. It's hugely popular in the Asian countries. But uh, yeah, family owned company, VTL. Husband, wife owns it. B, the wife, uh, listens to every pair of VTL Siegfrieds for, you know, some odd three, four, five, you know, however long it takes. But she personally listens to every single amp before it goes out to the, you know, out the door. So you're definitely dealing with a, a small batch type of product, but an unbelievably uh, killer sounding feat of engineering. Sounds fantastic. But yeah, so that kind of does it for this particular part of the sound room. I will tell you, I had this kind of lighter cur curtain on the old Macintosh speakers. It sounded better. You know, I had a big heavy curtain up before. It looked better, but it kind of dulled the sound. Now I've got the exact opposite. Now I'm going to have to redo my curtain to kind of uh, put something a little bit thicker and heavier. And I think that'll kind of improve the sound. Kind of the opposite with the Wilsons. But yeah, everything else over here... The Vicoustics in the corner, uh, those were kind of beneficial for calming down the line array of the Macintosh. They work quite well here as well. One of the things I will say we did with this, on the back of this speaker at the crossover, you have the ability to custom tune the tweeter in the mid-range. I actually had to knock the tweeters down 3 dB. They were a little bit hot for my particular taste. 
So that was one of the things that we were able to customize. Again, part of the two-day process, customizing the overall sound. You know, but the made, their speakers are made to do that. They're made to be customizable. So, you know, kind of bespoke per your room. So yeah, speakers, let's take a look at the reel-to-reels. This is my Ampex ATR-102. I'm pretty sure I might have told you guys a story once upon a time, but I was actually in the process of having one of these things custom ordered from ATR Services out on the East Coast. They're roughly around 20 grand, fully rebuilt. Got the PO from ATR, I was getting ready to pay for this thing. One day I'm at work getting ready to go see the new Star Wars movie, the uh, beginning of the franchise. So that would have been episode seven. A buddy of mine waited in line for you know, 12 hours. We got tickets to the very first showing in Arizona. Getting ready to get off of work, go see Star Wars. I look on eBay and here is a fully restored Ampex ATR 102 for I think it was six grand. One of the last machines restored by Mike Spitz. It had a one inch head block on it, and I think it was six grand. I gave a call to the guy and I said, I will come down there and I will pick this up tonight. And he goes, what do you mean tonight? I thought you said you live in Phoenix. I said, I'm gonna come straight there. Is it okay if I pick it up at 2.30 in the morning? Because the only way I could have made this work was drive there, pick it up, turn around, come back. I had to be at the store the very next day. So that's what I did. Canceled on my friend, Star Wars, who to this day actually mentions it. So, he, you know, what are we on? We're already on episode nine. He's still butthurt about it. Every single time I go see another Star Wars movie with him, he's like, hey, you remember that time you ditched us to go to California? And I'm like, but I got an ATR 102 for like a third of the price. I'm like, I had to do it. Now, of course, I had to do some modifications. I've got a quarter inch head block on it. Uh, you know, and of course, I've got your typical oscilloscope, tone generator, little tweaker tool, splicing tape, all part of having a reel-to-reel -reel machine and keeping it properly set up. But this is my absolute, like, this is the piece of gear and my system that will be here 20 years from now. This machine is unbelievable. It's one of the most iconic American reel-to-reels ever made. It's still used in studios and mastering houses to this day. Jack White has this exact same machine that he likes to record on with the one inch tape block, which I still have. The thing about this machine is the head block is removable. You can come in here, this plug pops in, you know, kind of plug and play. You know, you pop this off, you pop it back on the one inch head block, and now you've got a one inch tape. You realign it for the new head block, and you're off to the races. Don't ever use one inch tape, but it's there, I have it. But I've demoed this in the store. I've told people on my channel many, many times, nothing beats reel-to-reel. -reel. It's sad because there's virtually no reel-to-reel -reel out there. And I'm not talking your cheaply made seven and a half inch IPS or three and three quarter, you know, commercial stuff from the 70s that sounds like, you know, borderline cassette slash a track. But I'm talking the 15 IPS master tra tape transfer stuff. It, it, it's unbelievable. It is, you know, it's 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 an aha moment. You know, in most cases, it's better than live music because you're listening to essentially live music in a controlled environment. So, you know, this is just an unbelievable killer machine. So, yeah, I mean, ATR-102, drawback is there's virtually no reel-to-reels -reel you can get. There's a couple hundred that are out, and they're 450 bucks a reel. But, yeah, there you have it. Let me show you my other reel-to-reel. -reel. All right, here we have my Atari MTR-10. The only reason I actually got this machine was I bought a really killer classical collection. I showed it to you guys on YouTube about a year ago. The owner had this the actual pair of Wilson Alexandria speakers I got in the living room now. Massive amount of classical. I mean, I, I told the story in a previous video,
But what was interesting was all the records were essentially sent to an auction house. I purchased the bulk of those. All the gear turned up a month later to a broker who was selling the gear. I actually went to buy the Atari. And the reason being is a good friend of the gentleman, the gentleman passed away, but a good friend of his saw my video on the classical records and said, you know, one of the best things that, that he had that I just don't think they realize how good it was, because they had it on eBay for like 1200 bucks, was the reel-to-reel. -reel. He goes, I'm, a, you know, I'm his friend. I know what he did. He had the quarter-inch head block put in, you know, he told me all the stuff, you know, the eight or nine grand that he had spent on this machine. He said, it's a killer machine. You really should go buy that machine, Mike. You know, we had talked once before. He's like, hey, I saw your video, you know, uh, Bob would have really dug the fact that you got the records. You know, it was that kind of video, uh, you know, and I talked to him about, you know, it was kind of a way to get to know the owner of the collection because I ended up keeping a lot of those things. But... One of the things he mentioned to me in the conversation was the reel-to-reel. -reel. Then he was the one who called me a month later and told me the reel-to-reel -reel was online. So I went to go get the reel-to-reel. -reel, and while I was there, I saw the Wilsons. I ended up making a sp deal on the Wilson Alexandria's. But I got the Atari uh, while I was there. And I got this thing for a song. I think it was like twelve or 1300 bucks, with a massive amount of upgrades to it. It's a phenomenal sh machine built like a tank, uh, not nearly as good a sounding machine as the ATR, but I love this machine for a few things. I love the jog feature that it has. It allows me to do splice work, tape splicing, really easy. And you know, most guys reel to reel, I like to have, to have the ability to make copies of tapes. So you wanna have two machines. If you're a serious reel to reel guy, you really wanna have the ability to make tapes. So now, I do. I really haven't had the time to do much because I've been so busy with work. And this is a time-consuming thing, you know, making real-time tape copies. It's not something I really have time to do. But it is here. I do play a lot of uh, two-track tapes. So he, this gentleman, I also bought his reel-to-reel -reel collection. He had a massive amount of original from the 50s, RCA, and... Uh, Mercury Living Presence, two original two-track tapes. Before they dumbed it down and went to quarter inch, you know, in the early mid to late fifties, they were doing things in quarter, you know, you know straight two-track tapes, like modern master and tapes would be. The benefit to that was they were all done in real time. They were just so much higher quality. But I like to play a lot of those. This machine does really well putting small reels on it. The ATR does not like the small reels, it has an issue playing them. It was probably, you know, it was never meant for that. But this machine with its computer controlled circuitry uh, does a much better job handling the small reels. So I like to play the small reels on this. Eventually I'll put a little bit more use to it, but I haven't done it as of yet. But a great machine. <laughs> it, I almost feel guilty that I've mainly only used it for small reels and tape splicing. But the ATR is an amazing, machine and when I'm doing serious listening that's uh, the machine I go to but yeah so that's it for this system update in July 2021 I look at these videos I put these videos together I throw them on YouTube and I think I'm done buying stuff I need no more crap and one thing or another happens and you end up with more stuff but hopefully I'm not doing these system updates too frequently because uh you know Got to spend a little time enjoying the gear I have. But, you know, you never know. If I ever get a chance to get that Air Force One turntable, the right deal presented stuff, I'm going to be really excited to do that video. But, yeah, check out uh, some of the previous system tours, and you can kind of see how this has evolved over the years. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. Until next time.